Welcome back to our fourth positive solution for family session. This time we are going to focus on tell me what to do. We're also going to learn ways to help your children develop emotional vocabulary skills. Remember that we've been talking about how important it is to teach your children these skills so they know, so they know not to use challenging behaviors. Now let's get started with this session's topic, teach me what to do. You've probably heard a lot about the importance of vocabulary skills for young children, teaching them to read and write. There's also been a lot of talk about the importance of emotional vocabulary. Emotional vocabulary is the ability to recognize, label, and understand feeling in oneself and others. It's the foundation for children's abilities to control their emotions, develop relationships, interact with others, and become problem solvers. It's one of the most important areas of development during the child's early years. Children with a strong foundation in emotional vocabulary tolerate frustration better, get into fewer fights, are healthier, more focused, and have greater academic achievement. We're going to talk about many ways in which you can build your child's emotional vocabulary. In order for children to become more efficient at controlling their emotions, they need the words to describe their own emotions and emotions of others. When children are asked how they are feeling, they often respond with just good or bad, and mix all the emotions in between. Now I'm going to turn it over to Angela. Enhancing emotional vocabulary. You can help your children to enhance and expand their emotional vocabulary by helping them learn words for different feelings and use these words to label their own feelings and the feelings of others. You can help them understand that their feelings change. They may wake up grumpy, but they don't have to stay grumpy all day. You can help them learn that they have more than one feeling about something and that's okay, and that all feelings are valid. As children's emotional vocabularies grow, their ability to accurately read their own and others' emotions grows too. This gives your child more tools to use instead of using challenging behavior. You can help your child develop increased emotional vocabulary by talking about feeling words in everyday life. One of the best ways to teach feeling words is for parents to label their own and their child's emotions as they happen throughout the day. You might say things like, you look surprised, your mouth is open and your eyes are wide. You can also describe your feelings. It makes me happy when grandma visits, but I feel sad when she leaves. We all know that children love to sing and dance. Examples of using songs to build feeling vocabulary <clears throat> are singing songs, like if you are happy and you know it, hug your mom or dad. If you're sad and you know it, cry a little tear. This is a fun and easy way to teach your child feeling words. Also, the use of books can support emotional vocabulary skills and teach feeling words. Reading books helps children with understanding and social emotional skills. Most of all, reading together is a great way to spend time together. It is really important to engage your children when you read books together. You can do this by using fun voices, making sounds, and singing songs, and allowing your child to help read or tell the story. Make sure to select books based on your child's age and interests. Let them know that the librarian at the local library can be very helpful in selecting the right book as well. They just have to ask. Now I'll turn it over to Marlena. Now let's move on to a new topic, controlling anger and impulse. We've been talking about helping our children learn to recognize and name their own emotions and feelings. This is an important step for children in learning how to control their emotions. A child has to recognize that they feel angry before they can learn how to control that emotion. Having a label for what your child feels helps them vocalize this feeling instead of acting out. Have you ever told your child to calm down and they just keep doing whatever they were doing? Ever wonder why? Young children are often told to calm down, but what does that really mean? We have to make sure the child understands what we're asking them to do. How can children be successful at responding if they do not know what we want from them? Children feel anger in different ways, just as we do. Our life experiences have taught most of us by now when to walk away and cool down, be cautious, or ask for help. But young children haven't learned these skills yet. We can help them learn this by intentionally teaching them the skills they need. One of the really important steps in being able to problem solve and think of is being able to problem solve and think of solutions. We need to teach our children how to do this. Many children solve their problems by using challenging behaviors. However, even very young children can be taught more effective ways to problem solve. Children often learn problem solving strategies by watching the adults around them during difficult times of conflicts. This is important to remember. If young children can observe adults effectively and appropriately resolving conflicts or problem solving, 
They learn a tremendous amount about pro positive problem solving skills. This is enhanced if you model your problem solving thinking out loud and talk through the problem and solution to set the example you want your child to learn from. Now I'll hand it to Tara and she will talk about the steps of problem solving. Another way to help children learn to problem solve is to use four steps. One, what is my problem? You define the problem. Two, think of some solutions, general multiple solutions. Three, what would happen next if I use that solution? Evaluating consequences. Is that a good choice? Is it a safe choice? What might happen if we tried that solution? And four, try out the best one. Help your child think of possible solutions. It is important that you support your child in learning what some possible solutions might be. Remember that we will need to teach the children to problem solve. They will not just know how to come up with solutions. Examples for problem solving could be get an adult, ask nicely, ignore, play, say please stop, say please, share, trade toys, and wait your turn. This is a long list and is it important not to try to do the entire list at one time. Pick one or two solutions to focus on and practice these first. You can also talk about solutions at the grocery store or in the car. Problem solving games can be used as examples of situations to protect practice with your child also. You can set up typical problems that your child may encountered in the past and discuss possible solutions, such as, what if your sister hit you? How would you feel? What could you do? Or, what if you wrote on mommy's bedroom wall with a marker? How would you feel? How do you think mommy would feel? What could you do? You should ensure, encourage your child to come up with as many different solutions as possible. And it is important to try not to criticize the solution that your child gives. This is just a brainstorming time. The process will help children think of solutions the next time a similar situation occurs. Once children are able to think of solutions, the next step is to help them think about the consequences so that they can make the best choices. You can have them consider three questions. One, would it be safe? Will someone get hurt? Two, would it be fair? Remember to talk to your child about what fair means because it is a hard concept. And three, would everyone feel okay about it? Solutions that meet these three criteria are probably good ones to try. You can also role play the best solution. This can be a lot of fun if you and your child actually out, act out the role play or use puppets or other props like dogs and stuffed animals, etc. It is also a great way to keep your child engaged and interested while they are learning new skills. And well, that ends my section of the parenting curriculum, so I'll pass it over to Bridget and she's going to wrap it up. Now let's set the stage for success for problem solving. A great way to teach your child problem solving skills is to teach the skill when your child is facing or about to face a real problem or difficult situation. To do that, you should look for or anticipate these kind of situations. For example, if you and your child are going to a playgroup and you already know that he or she gets upset when there's someone playing with their favorite toy, before going to the playgroup, you could say, Sometimes when we go to the playgroup and you see someone playing with your favorite toy, you get upset. What could we do if that happens today? Let's think of some solutions. If you want to play with the toy, then we need to use our voice and ask. In order to teach problem solving in the moment, you have to be nearby and ready to help your child when a problem is about to occur. You will then be able to support your child in identifying a problem and helping them think of a solution. When your child problem solves, always be sure to give them encouragement. Examples of this could be a pat on the back, a high five, a thumbs up, or even saying, that was a good way to solve the problem. What a good thinker you are, or something similar to that. All of these gestures provide opportunity to, for you to refill your child's relationship tank. Remember to intentionally teach your child to use the examples we have talked about throughout this positive solution modules. It will help support their social emotional development and prevent challenging behaviors. A way that you can introduce these skills that we have talked to you about in this session today is by reading the story, Tucker the Turtle Takes Time to Tuck with Your Child. This book can be found on YouTube. We would like to thank everyone for joining us today, and this will conclude our Module 4 of the Positive Solutions Curriculum. 
Please don't forget to complete the pre and post surveys at the end to be entered into a drawing to win a gift card. We hope you stay safe and healthy and we will see you next time for Module 5 of the Parenting Curriculum.